Welcome back to Guitar Talk everyone. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Massive thank you to all of you who have supported me this year and done that. Roll that intro. What is up everyone? Welcome back to Guitar Talk. Today we are looking at the brand new Epiphone 1961 Les Paul SG Standard. for the specs at the body as we normally do we have got a two-piece mahogany body now obviously it's a solid finish so we'll just take Epiphone's word for the fact that it's two-piece body I can't see any joins on there but I say we'll take the word for that we've got a Gibson burst bucket two in the neck and a Gibson burst bucket three in the bridge we've got the Epiphone lock tone bridge and tail piece we've got a three-way selector switch two volumes and two tones, CTS pots on this and Mallory caps. Moving over to the next side of things on this, we have got 22 medium jumbo frets on a laurel fretboard. It's a mahogany neck with a slim C taper neck profile. It's a 12 inch radius and a 24.75 inch scale. And then it's got Epiphone Deluxe tuners. <laughs> History lesson for those of you who don't already know this, but the reason why this is a 1961 Les Paul SG is because originally the SG was released as a replacement for the Les Paul because the Les Paul wasn't as popular at the time as Gibson would have liked. So they came up with this design and this was the replacement Les Paul. <laughs> Looking at the tones and the sounds that you can get out of this, it is straight up humbucker territory. There's no single coil, coil splits on here or anything like that. It's just classic PAF tone. Obviously the Gibson burst buckers that you get in here are a welcome addition. It's always nice when you get the Gibson pickups rather than the Epiphone. Not that there's anything wrong with the Epiphone pickups, but it's always a nice plus. And you know, it doesn't have the top end that you'll get from having a maple top because this is an SG. But in my opinion, you get an SG because you want that mid-rich, gnarly, overdriven, growly tone. And this thing does that perfectly. <laughs> In terms of finish straight out of the box, I've got to say it's all really impressive. There's no gaps in the finish, there's no blemishes or anything like that. The binding's been done really nicely. Ends of the frets are perfect on this model. It's all very, very impressive and what I've come to expect from Epiphone in 2021, heading into 2022 by the time you guys see this. Um, not a knock on other companies, but there are other companies that charge more money for non-American guitars where the frets, if you've watched my videos before, have not been, in my opinion, up to spec. And some people say to me, well, if you want really well finished guitars, then you should just pay the extra and go for the American equivalent. But this is proof to me um, that you don't have to pay big American money to get a really good quality guitar. There are still companies out there that know how to make guitars properly, finish them properly, all for under a thousand pounds. So top marks to Epiphone because there is nothing that I can find to complain about or any bad points on this straight out of the box. Thank you. 
Looking at the setup, you know, this thing has been set up really, really well. For me personally, the action's a little bit higher than I would like out of the box, but that is personal preference. But the intonation is in, it plays really well, it holds tune. The tuners on it are really good. So again, top marks there to Epiphone. A little tweak for me just to bring the action down would be perfect for me, but there is nothing wrong with this one straight out of the box. So something to point out for you guys at home is, although it's a mahogany body, it's a very lightweight mahogany body, I don't have scales here to weigh it, so I can't tell you exactly how much it weighs, but obviously, if you are someone who has shoulder problems or anything like that, that is a really good option for you because it's nice and lightweight. The only thing I did find was the, because of the position of the strap button on the back here, which is just an SG thing, is because it's so lightweight and you've got all the hardware on the top of it is that it did kind of keep going forward. Completely controllable when you're playing it, but if you're someone who ever takes their hand off the neck of the guitar or anything like that, if you're playing in drop D and you do any open stuff, just something to be mindful of is that the guitar might go forward a little bit. But nothing wrong with that, just something to point out. Having a look at the feel of this, it's a, they call it an aged finish, but it's basically just like a satin finish. I like that because I find satin finishes really smooth and my hand doesn't stick to it. Where you've got the slim profile C neck, it's basically like a 60s profile. I prefer that because it's nice and slim, kind of flat on the back. It fits in my hand really well. It's my favorite. Gibson neck profile that they do. The only thing to point out is obviously where it's quite lightweight mahogany is it's quite easy to bend the neck. So when you're playing, you can kind of make things go a bit sharp or flat depending on which way you're putting pressure on the neck. That's just something with having a mahogany slim neck. It's perfectly controllable if you are paying attention to what you're doing, but just something to point out there. But yeah, really good for me, nice and comfortable, and it just plays really, really well. Is it worth the money? I would certainly say so, where you've got the Gibson pickups in there, CTS pots, all of that stuff. That is a really nice addition. You get a really nice hard case with this as well. And it's just a really good quality guitar. So coming in at, at the moment under 800 pounds in the UK, that is a serious guitar for the money. And if you are looking for uh, an SG, which is really close to Gibson specs, then this is certainly something to look out for. <laughs> So there we go, to sum up, I think this is an awesome guitar for the money and a serious contender if you're looking for something in the Gibson ballpark, but you can't quite stretch to paying full Gibson money. If you see one in the guitar shop, I encourage you to try it out because it is a really, really cool guitar. Other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Would you rather just get a Gibson? And yeah, as I said, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.